And so let's start off with a spiritual mind treatment. Okay. So this word is being spoken for each one. There is only one life. That life is God's life. God's life is perfect, whole, and complete. God's life is clearly a life that expresses infinite intelligence. This intelligence is operating everywhere. There is not a spot where this divine thinking presence is not present, not aware of, and there is not a spot that this divine presence is not creating with every particular detail. Any belief that all these details in the universe are too much for God is all erased and evaporated with the realization that the divine loving presence is not a magnified human with limited capacity. It is all, all mind, all intelligence, and it is omnipresent. Its center is everywhere and anywhere. And so this loving presence is right where each one is with all of its intelligence, all of its love, all of its qualities of goodness and harmony and peace and all of its guidance so that each one is receiving consciously as well as subconsciously the guidance from this all-knowing presence so that each one is always receiving that next step forward for her or his highest and greatest good. This infinite intelligence knows the consequences of any particular step anyone may take at any particular time. And this infinite intelligence knows that perfect step to take that, we, that is a part of the divine trajectory of moving from good to greater good. And so each one is on this path of moving from good to greater good right now, no matter what's going on in anyone's life. The fact is right where each one is, is the beginning of moving on that path from good to greater good. And the infinite intelligence that knows everything, it knows all of the other scenarios, it knows what's on its way, it knows its truth, it knows what other people are gonna do, and it's creating everything so that the highest and the greatest good of all of the universe is always maintained, sustained, created, always present. Each one is now in tune with that flow of that loving presence and therefore is hearing, getting, and cooperating with that divine guidance that lets each one know what he or she needs to know, thinks what he or she needs to think, does what he or she needs to do for the highest and the greatest good of all, which definitely includes the highest and greatest good of each one. Any belief in sacrifice and being a victim that one must suffer for the highest and the greatest good of all is a lie. The divine does not stub its toe. The divine is always creating that beautiful system of relationships and their movement so that the highest and the greatest good of each and every aspect is moving forward in ways and means of goodness, of harmony, and of peace, of love. So there is no wrong, there is no pain, there is no nothing negative needed to happen in order to learn a lesson, in order to get with the program. It's all of those human beliefs about what God requires is all erased, evaporated, and vanished. The way life is, is always moving everything that is in perfect harmonious relationship with everything else it is always in balance always in harmony and always in that perfect position for the highest and the greatest good of each one to be present to be available it is always there as a choice and so each one has been given full and complete authority to choose and with the divine guidance present and heard crystal clear, that choice of thought, of action, 
of beingness to experience that beautiful harmonious movement from good to greatest good this is the choice each one knows and each one makes so each one is now in agreement with the highest and the greatest good of all and there is no drama or trauma everything in the world is changing seamlessly effortlessly peacefully and each one is guided wherever he or she is to respond to relate to participate in this effortless easy movement from good to greater good any belief in loss and lack any belief that it's too good to be true that bad things must happen all belief in trouble it's all by this word erased evaporate vanished all belief in punishment in sin in crime is erased all belief that one is bad that one has been bad <sighs> is erased and vanished by that blessed grace of unconditional love, each one feeling it, sensing it, experiencing it as complete and total forgiveness. And so each one relaxes and has peace of mind about the past, peace of mind about oneself, and peace of mind about one's future. And so each one realizes that the highest and the greatest good of all is not benefited from any emotional or personal experience of suffering. As Dr. Ernest Holmes has revealed, the world and each one here has learned enough from suffering. And so there is no suffering mandated by God. All the human really great reasoning for such suffering is erased, evaporated, and vanished. Each one is open and receptive to being wherever he or she is and realizing that this place is the start of that path of unfolding goodness. Each one is on the path, each one is moving forward, and all of heaven and earth, all in the universe, is colluding to bring to each one more health, more harmony, more peace, more goodness, more love, more joy, more wisdom, more clarity, more connection with the divine and with the divinity in each one. More wealth, more support, more happiness than ever before because this path of moving from good to greater good does not have trade-offs. There are no sacrifices. As one moves forward in love, all the wealth and the health and the joy and the support follows right along. As one moves forward in peace and grace and ease, all the love and the delight and, and the harmony moves right along. There is no separating of the goodness of God and all of its qualities, all of its present. And as each one here, moves forward in awareness of truth, in realization of that divinity within and its total goodness. As each one moves forward now in this connection with the divine, all the divine qualities go right with it. So as a result, each one is healthier, wealthier, more supported and supplied, uh, more happier, peaceful, harmonious, more joyous, than ever before, everything in God is intelligent, and so everything in each one's world is operating intelligently, and each one is flexible in accepting the greater good in conditions in each one's world. I am grateful that this is the truth. I release this word to the law. It's done, and so it is. <sighs> okay, so that got us going. All right, so welcome everybody who is here, and let's move forward. Reverend Rich, take us away.
Deciding to be open, let's be clear and use divine guidance in choosing what we are opening to so that we open to the love, the greater good, the peace, the harmony, the, the realization of truth that is here this morning. This service, everything around it, Reverend Rich, the speaker, the welcomer, the practitioner, is here to realize a tr greater truth, a truth that we have never known before, but that truth when it's revealed sets us free. And so we want to be open to it and with flexibility accept it. But we don't be open to any old willy-nilly thing. We've been given the divine qualities of wisdom, of choice, of guidance. And so we choose for what we are open to. And so make that decision now and realize that what is here is the truth that sets us free, as well as all the other qualities of the divine. Let's accept it, receive it, assimilate it, enjoy it, and so it is. I am opening, I am opening, my heart is ready. Good morning. Good morning. I am Mary Vercondi. I am a practitioner here at CSL Princeton New, in New Jersey. Excuse me. We are a loving, healing, inclusive community which teaches and practices the principles of science of mind for the benefit of ourselves and the world. And you can learn more about us on our website. We have a website, cslprinceton.org. And there you'll find about classes. You can find out how to reach out to us, how to get spiritual mind treatment, how to reach out to our practitioners who can treat for you and help you see a higher truth. There's also a class coming up, and our practitioner, Susan Neat, teaches this on Wednesday nights. And we can be the change we wish to see in the world. As expressions of God, we can be agents for global change. So we invite you to participate during the month of September in our world work, based on the work of Joel Smith. As two or more gathered in its name, we will hold the space of life, love, light, power, peace, harmony, and joy for the world and the universe and beyond. The information is on our website, on the Facebook page. It is a Zoom call. It begins at 7.30 and will last between 30 and 45 minutes. And thank you in advance for your attendance. And so we are so happy that you're with us today, whether you're here in person or online whether you're watching this live or you're watching it sometime this afternoon or later this week. Know that we are all together no matter when we watch this because the divine is everywhere all the time and there is no, the divine does not recognize time. And so whenever we think about it, we are all together. And the divine is speaking through each one here, the speaker, through our musician, Reverend Rich, to the practitioner, through me, the divine is speaking directly to you. And so you are here to hear a message. And so open yourself to receive your message, to receive your good this morning. We're glad you're here. I hope you enjoy our time together. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I am 
We are the love of God. Good morning. I'm John Heron. I'm a practitioner with the Center for Spiritual Living, Princeton. So this morning I want to lead us in a little meditation. And I want to start by saying this. Be kind. Find the place inside of you where kindness lives and be kind to yourself. Be kind to the world. Find that place inside of you and live from there. Kindness lives, it's a, a living vital thing in each one. Find it, be it. So in, in that place and from that place, I'm gonna guide you in a short meditation and then I'm gonna give a spiritual mind treatment. So for now, take a nice deep breath or whatever you do to relax yourself. Just notice where your body is. Just quietly let it relax. And as I say each line, just let it be there in your heart. Infinite good surrounds me now. Infinite good fills me now. Infinite good guides me now. Infinite good protects me now. I am that infinite good. So take a moment and let those thoughts live inside of you. And I have a question for you just staying in that space. When I said the word now at the end of each sentence, did you say to yourself, oh, that's a great idea, I'd like to, I'd like to get there? Or, 
oh, I've got to practice this one in the future. This is a good bunch of affirmations. Because if you did that, then you weren't in the now. So let's go through this again. Take a nice, deep breath, or again, whatever you do to relax yourself. And do the same thing within, emotionally, mentally. Take a breath, whatever you need to do, whatever that means to you. Spiritually, emotionally, take a breath. And right now, let's be in this place. Infinite good surrounds me now. Infinite good fills me now. Infinite good guides me now. Infinite good protects me now. I am infinite good now. 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 Infinite good always present. And so from that place, I'll do the spiritual mind treatment. And so knowing that that thing that we call God is infinite good and is always present in every one. This word is for each one listening, for each one here, for each one online, for each one who wishes they were here. The universe is infinite good and it is that good which is beyond good and bad it simply is what is and is always infinite good and since it is infinite it is everything and therefore it is each one each one listening is that infinite good and therefore I know right here right now that infinite good surrounds each one, fills each one, guides each one, protects each one. And I know that each one is now fully open to the presence of infinite good. I know that each one is filled and lifted up in every area of each one's life, on the physical level, in their home, in their family. Each one is now knowing infinite good. Mentally, emotionally, infinite good is what is present. Spiritually, only infinite good is what is present. And I know that each one is letting go of any belief in anything other than infinite good. It melts away. It never really existed. The only thing that exists is infinite good. Each one now lives in that infinite good, lifted up, guided, surrounded. I am truly grateful that this is so. God is present in, as, and through all. And since this is so, I release this to the law. And so it is. Jai Guru Dev.
Doki. All right. So thank you. Hello, Scott. Hello. I, I've said hello to Deja, Kathy, if it's not too late to add a body part. Okay. All right. Marky, Selena. Hello. Welcome from Woodridge, Illinois. Glad you're here. And hello, Alan and Kathy Kurtz and Angela. And I guess that's Clee is also out there with you. Okay, great. Oh, good. We're going to have a good one. And welcome to all of you here in the studio audience. Well, as I'm preparing for this talk today, and all of you sent your <clears throat> millions of different ideas about physical body parts, and as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, oh gosh, I could keep talking about this for another few weeks. But uh, let's see if we can wrap it all up. What we are talking about, when I'm talking about our physical body, what I'm really talking about is how we allow ideas to move through us. So our body is just an outpicturing of the ideas that we are accepting, circulating, allowing to move in us, releasing, and that's it. That's the metaphysical position that we take. In the science of mind we take, it is the ideas that are the things. And so um, when we forget that, we start getting the idea that our body is the thing and that I got to fix my body, I got to fix my body. And when we take a spiritual approach, when you go to one of our magnificent practitioners and ministers, many of whom are here right now, uh, or just people who are in their spiritual path and are knowing the truth, when you take a physical problem to them, they translate it to the ideas that you've been believing. And then they know the divine, I call it, that divine truth. The divine truth is an idea of God. That's the cause of all. Each one translates your symptom into the false belief that you had about the idea of the divine. And then they replace your false belief with the truth. It's, it is like you're in a dark room with your symptoms and the practitioner just turns the light 
of truth. And with the realization or the revelation of the light, of the truth, the darkness disappears, yes. And when we do a spiritual mind treatment, we expect the symptom to disappear because the symptom's not the problem. The symptom is the image in the mirror that our ideas are projecting. So let me say another thing. So our symptoms are on the television screen or your computer screen. But the video, the film that is showing is a whole series of ideas. So in this one book that we've been using a lot, the Encyclopedia of Ailments and Diseases, expensive book, translated from the French, Canadian Jacques Martel wrote it, really good. I also recommend easier book, Heal Your Body by Louise Hay. You all know that well if you've been around for a while. It's a whole list, let me see, of symptoms, false belief, and the truth that sets you free. And I'll have them out afterwards if anybody wants to check something out that I didn't cover. Like, oh, let me see, face, oh, okay. All right, so using that, I wanna bring up this idea of pain. So it doesn't matter where the pain is, pain, even emotional pain. The purpose of pain, Jacques Martel is, one of the means that the body uses to draw my attention and tell me that I must stop and become aware that there are changes I must make in my life and in my way of perceiving and judging myself. The purpose of pain is, you know, in the human realm, we, it draws attention to a part of our body and we you know, go to a doctor or an, an, some sort of healer, or whatever, to take away the pain. Um, I admit I use aspirin. Okay, fine. It's good at taking away the pain for some people, for some situations, right? But taking away the pain without addressing what needs to be changed in your thinking is a temporary fix. So I'll take it, but I'm no fool. I know that until I address what was it in my thinking that I need to become aware of and pay attention to and make adjustments for so that I don't have that particular pain show up again or a different pain showing up somewhere else. And it, and it, it might show up in our body, but it might show, show up in our world or in our finances or in our relationships. Pain is pain, right? It's only there to draw our attention to something we were not paying attention to, something about ourselves, something where we're just off center, a little bit. You know, just pay attention to this. And that's all. There is no divine mandate for us to suffer on in any way on any level and so that divinely created experience of pain is just to have us pay attention and when we pay attention that's all that's required i pay attention to whatever the condition is the headache i pay attention to it and then I realized, oh, I've been trying to fix things or figure things out too hard in my own little brain. And it hurts. And the divine guidance is telling me, stop it. If you know uh, all the creative types who like to talk about creativity, they all talk about, oh, when you get stuck, writer's block or whatever. And, and their advice always is, stop. Go walk in the woods, go do something else. Raymond Charles Barker um, shared in one of his talks that I had uh, the pleasure of listening to that um, after he does his spiritual mind treatment for this, that, for himself and everybody else, he goes off and reads murder mysteries <laughs> to take his mind off of all the things that he sorted out. Well, I happen to like that because I'm a murder mystery fan too, but I don't recommend it because it's murder mysteries. Okay, whatever. 
I'll deal with those ideas when the pain tells me it's time to think that. So anyway, so we need to realize that about pain. It's not a bad thing. And being a spiritual student uh, or on a spiritual path, what we want to do is, if no matter what kind of pain you have, emotional, physical, worldly, whatever, ask yourself, what am I not paying attention to about me? The answer will come right up. You may not like the answer. If you're like me, you don't like, I never like the answer. It's a, oh, well, there must be a better answer. That's too easy. And usually the answer for me is something like, shut up and stop it. I don't like that answer. Because, because, as we go through all of uh, the system of thoughts and ideas moving through our body and the system of our body, one thing that we want to realize is the world of conditions, of facts, of cells, it's always changing. And we have to change our thinking along with it or else. If all the planets and everything is all moving and one of the planets decide, ah, I don't feel like moving today. <laughs> Havoc on the universal level. And that's true of us too. So unfortunately, for many of you who submitted body parts, flexibility is the answer. Flexibility. All right. So ideas. They come into us and we must choose which ones we are going to assimilate. What ones, likewise in our bodies, right? We have the banquet of food to choose from. What particular piece of food are you putting in the body? No matter what food you choose, it represents an idea that you are also contemplating. And over time, the types of food that you put in your body will show you the types of thinking you put into your body, into your consciousness. So you might want to take a look at that. <laughs> so assimilation um, is something that, that is a conscious act to consciously choose what to put in your body is a conscious act, although, right, how many of us go unconscious, right? You put, you put a bowl of M&Ms out, almond, <laughs> almond M&Ms out, and I'm, I'll just take one, not enough, one, and then one, and then one, and then one, and then off I go, right, whatever, so don't give me those almond M&Ms. <laughs> They'll be gone. Oh. I was uh, in a, a car caravan. I was alone in my car, and we had stopped at a um, nice little restaurant, and in the gift shop I had bought all these little goodies, whatever, that I thought I would use, eat in my hotel room over the weekend. And um, on the, the, the caravan I noticed one of the little bags got opened, and I would, you know, reach over and just take one and another one, whatever, and you know, it's my own little personal thing, I thought, until we all stopped, arrived at our destination, and the person in the car behind me said, well, I just saw your hand going, and she knew what I had bought, so she knew what I was eating the whole ride, and I had eaten the whole bag. So that was unconscious. I was doing it, why? Because I was driving, it gave me, you know, a little bit of unconscious peace you know, stuff in my stomach full of food. The assimilation, the, the choosing of the food as well as the ideas into the system was never intended to be unconscious. It is a conscious act always. And with that little statement, I'm horrified at how much of the thoughts I take in are unconscious. It's meant to be conscious. So, it's important to think about what you assimilate, what you put in. And one of the body parts um, that, um, 
was asked for me to discuss that has to do with assimilation is the stomach. And, uh, right, because you take, so assimilation affects the teeth, the mouth, the esophagus, the throat, uh, the stomach, and then there's, there's organs, right, that have to do with digestion. So digestive stuff, all that stuff has to do with how we take in, assimilate. The question of heartburn came up. What Then what is heartburn? <laughs> and Louise Hay says, fear, 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 clutching fear, heartburn. So it's something we've taken in that is terrifying us, terrifying us so much that we don't really even want it to assimilate anymore, but it's just stuck there. We put it in and it's just stuck there. And so we feel that until it's digested in some way. And then the other experience, um, well, acid reflux, which is, or uh, I had to look with um, good old Jacques Martel about this one. He said that all stomach problems, okay, so everybody take a breath and relax. Dread, fear of the new, and an inability to assimilate the new. So we want to be mindful and aware of the ideas as well as the food that we're putting in. And it doesn't matter what the food is, what is your thinking about the food? what you're putting in, or what's your emotional state while you're putting in the food or putting in the ideas. See, all that affects. And then our next activity that we experience is circulation. So with conscious mind, we get to choose what goes in, but with circulation, we realize garbage in, garbage circulated. That circulation can only circulate what you have put in. So if you've put in something that you don't want to circulate within you, it's got to go through the system. Bless you. See, that's one way to release. Sneezing is release. Good job. So if you put something in you that you don't want to circulate, begin sneezing immediately. <laughs> right? Uh, or we'll talk about elimination in a little bit. But um, so say I sat around and watched, you know, a couple of hours of horror films or whatever, and, and those images are circulating in me. Oh no, what can I do? I just have to wait till they eliminate? No, 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 no. <sighs> to improve our circulation, what we can do is set an intention of what quality of the divine do we want to circulate all things that are within us, all ideas that are within us. And a great quality is love. So if, I, so if I was like Jonah's whale and just opened up my mouth and pfft, it all in, okay, <laughs> you know, and Jonah's in there building a little fire in order to get out. If I, the whale, decide that it is love that is circulating all things, love will sort out all that stuff. And also, say you've just uh, assimilated only the best of things circulating with a lot of anger is going to give us problems in our circulatory system. So it doesn't matter if you're eating the best foods, right? How many of you are eating the best foods? You know, you've got this wonderful, and the vitamins and the mega whatevers and all that stuff. You're like putting it all in and you still have circulation issues. Ah, so what we want to do is flexibly accept a quality of the divine to be the ruler the subconscious um, uh, ruler or the subconscious director of how all this good is that we have assimilated, how it is circulated. So love, peace, harmony, order, intelligence, these are all great qualities to connect with in your heart and say, okay, 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 whatever. I put in, right? Whatever. I let love rule peacefully, putting everything in its right place in harmony and love. So 
you've heard me say my favorite affirmation. I move from great good to greater good, and I add to it in ways and means of goodness. So, so circulation is the ways and the means that we process what we are receiving. So conscious mind we need to be more mindful of what we put in. Then whatever we put in, that's what we've got. But love can rule. Elimination. Oh, so did I do love uh, circulation, circulation? Okay, so we had the question of uh, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Heart, lungs, breathing issues, nervous system, all are parts of our circulation. So anything that is uh, in our body parts to having to do with how the stuff circulates in us, right? The blood circulates, the nerve signals, cir signals circulate, the air circulates, whatever. So that shows us how well we are doing and circulating our good. So of course the heart is involved. Now, um, let me answer the question. High cholesterol, if experienced, is an indication that you may be clogging the channels of joy circulating in you. And high blood pressure may be a long-standing emotional problem not resolved. In other words, it's stuck in us. Uh, someone who uh, asked about family physical traits, and so I'll address this with you. My father died at 49 with the condition of hardening of the arteries. That used to be a big deal back then. Now they just <laughs> and you're good to go. Um, did I inherit that tendency? Now this is the thing. Um, the Biology of Belief uh, was written by a biologist who did studies on this. His name will come to me or somebody or you will shout it out. No. Bruce Lipton. Bruce Lipton wrote the book, The Biology of Belief. I highly recommend it because what he proved scientifically with the biology area is that whatever we may have inherited in our genes is just a possibility. But what activates a particular trait that we may have in a gene from becoming something is our environment. So again, being a descendant of the human race, we don't want to know what might be as possibilities in our genes. But they don't, it's not cause. What is cause is the embodiment of the thoughts that cause the particular condition to be activated. So knowing this, my father at 49 died clogging, hardening of the arteries, I mean massive hardening. And um, at that time, I was an atheist, so what did I know? Uh, but since I became into this teaching, I'm like, okay, what is that about? Well, what do I know about his beliefs, personality, the way that he was? Um, and I know that he was a man who had tremendous fear in him because he, he, he talked about it, that word fear, a lot. I also know, or in my opinion, right, children analyzing their parents, uh, but this is what I see and what I would inherit then is he... He hadn't even begun to experience the circulation of love in his life. He, in, in my childhood perception, he shut it out. Now, that was the environment I was raised in. And so I'm the one who is choosing the ideas that I'm going to assimilate. I in, I in, I assimilated that environment as I was moving through it because I didn't know any better and it was so loud around me. But once I became a conscious spiritual being, I began thinking about that. And I, I thought, whoa, 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 Karen, you need to know more love or else. 
whatever I might have inherited as a family trait surrounded by that environment could be so activated if I don't choose more love for myself. And it's been a challenge for me, definitely, coming from that inheritance of environment. And whether that little gene is there or not, I don't know. It doesn't matter. So, so to choose love has been my path. And every time I choose more love, I just cry and, you know, you know, my life improves in every way. Um, so we, when we look at our human history, we need to realize I am not a human history. I'm now the chooser of what goes in and circulates in me. But we also need to choose the thought, I am not a human history. And then if I'm not a human history, then who am I? I am a direct descendant of the divine, the father, mother, God. And the divine genes of perfection, wholeness, and completeness are what I have inherited. And then I have to back it up with my environment. And I have to know love, 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 and more love. And one of my favorite things that I say to myself when I go off is divine love show me the way. Divine love, step in for me. Divine love, speak through me. Divine love, I receive it. It's something I'm personally choosing because of what my family history was and what I also just know is true of me. I know how little love I let myself feel when I was 21 compared to now. So a family physical trait is just like any other idea. It's an idea of the fa that the family has given to you, but again, you have choice. And so, um, someone asked the question, is it worth the effort? Because we ha I could take a pill for high blood pressure. I, I wear eyeglasses. Um, is it worth it to do all the spiritual work to change a, fam a family trait or inheritance or condition. And this is what I have to say about that. First of all, it's your choice. It's your decision whether it's worth all the work. Clearly, I'm still wearing glasses. You know, from time to time, I make a big deal about it and I really get to work on it, whatever. Uh, is it worth it? That's your choice and your decision. However, what I also know is spiritually true and I have experienced it to the extent that I have done the work about anything. A particular physical condition that you may have is not about the physical condition alone. I could probably run around with all sorts of heart ailments and nowadays the medical profession is a genius in putting all kinds of tubes and plugs and, and, you know, and if I want, stick somebody else's heart in me. So that I can keep living and functioning very, very well with all of the aids and assistances that the world has developed on my behalf. But we don't know what we don't know. And what would my life be like? What would your life be like? if the ideas of love were circulating freely within you, what would it be life for, like for you to be living your life, accepting love, feeling that love circulating, and expressing that love freely and generously? You don't know what it's like until you got it. And in my experience, it's worth it. So yeah, the heart, the heart, the particular symptom of the heart, whatever, you could do whatever. When you get the truth that sets you free, when you pay attention to that area and deal with the direct ideas that are there for you to improve, just improve. There's nothing wrong with them. Just improve. The benefits of the improvement are far beyond anything you can imagine because you can't, if you're a fish, you can't imagine your life without the water. 
but there is a life out there without water. And so if you know, you, you've got some sort of systemic family, whatever, you can't imagine yourself, how it would feel being you without that false belief. It's worth it. It's worth it. That's my opinion. It's up to you. Of course, I still wear glasses because I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> Bless yourselves. Okay, elimination. Um, so uh, the best I've got is that is the kidney is um, is a part of the cleaning out of the body that evacuates the negative ideas that inhabit the body. It, the kidneys are there to expel everything that pollutes it and helps to purify it. So the kidneys filter the emotions that en and enable me to live and joy when the cleaning is done constantly and naturally, letting go of old angers and old sorrows. Whew. So I say elimination in our experience is our habit, our habit of letting things go, of letting pains go, letting hurts go, resentments go, hatreds go, issues go. Uh, when I first came in in this teaching, I heard, I, they finally convinced me to practice forgiveness. And the first thing that I had to do in practice forgiveness was make a list of all those who'd done me wrong. And I had a list. <laughs> <laughs> I had a list. It was a long list. I kept adding and adding. I mean, it was from childhood. All those who've done me, who slighted me in some way, whether they were aware of it or not, who knows? Whether they actually did it or not, who knows? But I had a list. I am so glad I started doing forgiveness work, and I just took any old person on that list and began doing some spiritual forgiveness work, maybe writing, you know, what is it, 30 times a day, I forgive you so-and-so, I forgive you, 70, what is it, 70 times, whatever, 70? 70. 70, people know the spiritual practice, writing it 70 times, I forgive you so-and-so completely, I forgive you so-and-so completely, I forgive you so-and-so completely, and one of the things I discovered, I think I only did it for three or four people on the list, and what happened was a whole lot of the people disappeared off the list. So you get a lot of bang for your buck and just working with the car driver and who, who cut in front of you, you know, really doing deep forgiveness work and letting that love circulate to eliminate that <laughs> or that physical gesture that you might have or not have done but thought. That, uh, just being free of that. Um, allows those, those angers, those hurts, those little nicks and pains that uh, human beings experience uh, to, 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 to get better at letting them go, spiritually letting them go, spiritually letting them go, which is, again, spiritual healing, releasing. All right, so um, we're left now with... Uh, our fourth area, which I call the foundation of our belief. So our foundation deals with our structural body, our bones, our joints, uh, our activity of movement on the planet. And I believe that our position with regards to the world is what rules our movement, our foundation, body parts. Because when we take a position, right, upright position, um, my backbone is nice and straight, everything is able to be in balance and in harmony, adjust, whatever, but I notice in this really nice, strong, erect position, I'm not comfortable. I kind of kind of want to slump down, right? Okay, there it is, honey. So what is that position that you're taking with regards to the whole world or with regards to God? And I spoke last week about that my 
uh, family, one, half of my family's position is with the hunched over shoulders. And as I think about that in me, I realize, ooh, this is a position of, to the world, I'm a victim, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. And um, when I've had uh, lots of challenges in the world, I'll go home, right? And I'll tuck myself in, right? Like the little baby, tuck myself in. And under the covers, don't hurt me. And let me eat some baked potatoes while we're at it. Mashed potatoes, you know. Cover up this belly because, you know, you're stabbing knives in me. And at least that way you've got more fat to go through before you touch a vital organ. We know what I'm talking about. The, 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 this is the human race thoughts. So the only solution to the foundation of our body, its structure and our bones is everything, is our relationship with the divine. We need it to be stronger. And in order to, for that higher position of consciousness, in order to maintain it, we have to be stronger and we have to be more flexible. So all joints have to do with changes in the direction in life and ease in that movement. So all our joints show, uh, show us how easy we are in changing our direction in life and our response to what the world is doing, our response to our own inner guidance. So you all should have lovely joints. That's our, right, our elbows, our wrists, our knees, our ankles, hips. And if you don't, there's something you are resisting change about. So um, there's some ideas, if, if some clues. If it's the left side of your body, it might have to do with how you're receiving. The right side of your body, how you are giving out. Uh, but Marcia Sutton and Lloyd Strum gave it a different twist, which I like. I see my left side of body, my body, with how I am releasing and letting go of the past, and the right side with how I'm moving forward into my future. Um, our, our legs, our feet, our knees, uh, so often, if, 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 if you've got something that comes up, is, is it the right side? making it hard to move forward on the right. There may be some issues, stubbornness, fears about moving forward, making changes into your future. If it's on that left side, it may have to do with something you're dragging along with you and you're, you're just having some difficulty flexibly letting it go. Um, Our toes, both, both Louise and, and Jacques say that our toes are worried about the details of our future. So uh, had to look that one up. Okay. And then also um, with uh, Louise Hay, when she's talking about legs and feet, she says it also might be a symptom of how we receive pleasure, as we, how we walk forward into receiving pleasure. So, yeah, toes, the minor details of the future bother us, that's me. Um, right, so let's see. Hair loss, fear, tension, and trying to control life. Well, there we go. All right, what else do we have on the list, I think? Everything else. Okay. I think I got all the questions. Oh, pain in the butt. How could I forget that? <laughs> that was the first one that came in. What part of uh, assimilation, circulation, elimination, and foundation that is? I don't know. I, I, not too much. But what it is said is that, first of all, it's pain. So it's a clue 
to pay attention to something. And then Jacques Martel said that um, it might be an indication of loss of power or old stubborn anger. So, and someone laughs. <laughs> Must have hit the butt right in the spot. So uh, there we go. So what we want to realize is we've got the use of our conscious mind as to the ideas we're putting in. And certainly the highest ideas of truth is what we go for, but you know, you need to bring in the sweetness of life because uh, there's body parts that start telling you you're not, giving a, you're not getting enough pleasure, not enough sweetness in life. So what is that for you? The sweet ideas, the joyous ideas, the loving ideas. Then how we circulate it all, love, peace, harmony, intelligence, always good choices. To, and then um, let go. Even the highest truth that we have received at some point needs to be released. And we know that when we release we get to choose and assimilate more. So you gotta let go in order to receive more. So, and then what is the whole position that we take with life? What is, what is it, the truth that we stand upon? And if we're standing upon a false belief as our little truth, we're on shaky ground. And so, but that truth of God, the truth of goodness, is present within us. And so we can always take that stand just by saying that. As John gave us as affirmations, you know, infinite good surrounds me. That's a statement of truth. I can stand upright if I know infinite good surrounds me, right? I don't have to hunch over because there's bad coming in one direction or the other, right? So our bodies are, created for us to express the consciousness that we are. They're not divinely designed to fall apart. They're not divinely designed to give us trouble so that we learn lessons and avoid going to hell. They are there for us to express the gifts of the divine we have been given and give them freely to the world, being fully supported by the divine in that gift. And our body lets us know what in that experience of living might be out of whack. That's all. And when we deal with the issue of how we are living our lives, the need to have the body part be a problem goes away and usually is eliminated. So with all of that to contemplate. There are some ideas to assimilate and then allow to circulate. Let's move forward, Reverend Rich. You ready to sing us something? All right. Okay, all right, let's hear Reverend Rich. What George Harrison did. Right. Okay. Oh, won't you please, 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 oh,
Okay, I saw we have a question. The back, by the way, is part of the foundation, the structure. So think of um, where do you feel you're not getting enough support? There's a little clue question there. All right, spiritual mind treatment for everybody. Okay, this word is being spoken for each one. Infinite mind knows all, and it has designed its beloved creation in order to express its magnificence through its creation. Each one is truly the face of the divine and has been given a body in which to live, move, and have their being in earth, in relationships. And so the divine desires each one to freely, joyously, generously, fully and completely live the life that is that divine life in a unique way, which is the uniqueness of each one. And everything in the universe is supporting each one to be that and express that uniqueness that he or she has been created to be. And that includes the body. And so each one is now seeing their body as being a fit and capable vehicle through which one may express the consciousness of love and joy that he or she truly is. And wherever there may be something that is not functioning perfectly, each one else sees it as the clue, as the guidance of what one needs to change in order to experience expressing the joy and love of life in a greater, freer, happier, healthier, wealthier way than ever before. And as a result, each one is healthy now and each one gets the answer, the guidance. Each one has the clue. Each one realizes how they need to change in their interaction of ideas. And so as a result, each one is free of all human diagnosis and free of focusing on the body and how to fix it. Each one is free of all that stuff and allows the divine to create the perfect body And each, as each one just cooperates with changing how the ideas of the divine are received, circulated, released, and that position one takes with them. And as a result, each one is strong, flexible, healthy, a vital expression of the living spirit of joy within. This is the truth. I am grateful that that's the truth and everything else is not. And so the law is not directed to Make that truth revealed for each and every one in a magnificent, wonderful way, and it is done. Thank you. And so it is. All right. That's the way it is. Reverend Rich, get us out of here.